2018 section 1 question 1 a car is moving at a speed of 2 meters per second the car now accelerates at 4 meters per second every second until it reaches a speed of 14 meters per second the distance traveled by the car during this acceleration is and you're given the usual five choices so first things first it's a kinematics problem and you have to be highly organized and the first step in organization is put down the main characters the main variables of all your kinematics so you should have this list u v a s and t u is going to be equal to the initial velocity in this case it's going to be two meters per second two meters per second the final velocity is going to be 14 meters per second so you fill that in as well 14 meters per second the acceleration you're told that four meters per second every second so four meters per second every second and you have to find the displacement or the distance gone so there's your list you've got u initial velocity you've got v the final velocity you've got a the acceleration and you're looking for the displacement s so which kinematic equation that we're going to use well I prefer you to learn them but they'll be in your data book look it up and the one we're going to be using in this case is v squared equals u squared plus two times the acceleration now the next key point of this question is being able to reorganize that equation into what s is so we go v squared take away u squared from the other side and bring it over and that's equal to 2as we want to find the displacement so we have to divide by 2a so we're going to have v squared minus u squared and that's where I like to put a bracket around it I'm going to divide that by 2 times the acceleration and that will give us a value for s so practice that reorganization of that equation until you can do it almost without thinking about it now it's just time to plug in the numbers so we'll go over here and do that s the displacement should be equal to bracket final velocity which is 14 squared take away the initial velocity which is 2 squared close the bracket divide by 2 times acceleration put a small bracket around here 2 times the acceleration which is 4 and we do the calculation take your time over it and we should get an answer equal to 24 and its displacement so it's got to be measured in meters so that corresponds to answer C in the multiple choice so the answer for that one is C so what are the key points of this question the key points first of all is you must know your kinematic list that is U V A S and T you must then be able to fill in the correct data so read the question not once not twice but even a third time to make sure you've got all the right data and put it in the proper places put a dot against all the things you have to you've got and you have to find so u v a and s and then check up your equation list choose the equation the next part of the skill you must have is rearranging that v squared equal u squared plus 2as into any of those ones so you have to practice 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 rearranging finally plug in your numbers get your hands in your calculator i prefer to use brackets you should too because your calculator's got brackets on it your calculator's a powerful instrument with brackets and you can keep your calculations all neat and tidy finally get answer 24 meters keep it to the two significant figures as is all the data you've been given and the answer for that one is going to be c question two from the 2018 higher physics section one a ball is dropped from rest and allowed to bounce several times. The graph shows how the velocity of the ball varies with time. So we're dealing here with a velocity time graph. And we're asked to look at the following three statements. And we're asked also to find which of these statements is or are correct. So here's the graph drawn out a larger for you. And before we start the question, we have to ascertain a very important fact. Velocity is a vector, which means it can be represented by an arrow. And the arrow points in the direction of the movement. Now in this particular case, we've got a velocity time graph. And we can show from the velocity time graph where all the little arrow uh, vectors are. Because that's all the velocity time graph is. Watch this. Here we have the graph. So at 0 times 0, the graph is starting at 0. So we have got no velocity, which is pretty obvious. 
Now to draw the vector of the velocity, we start at the time axis and we move up to meet the graph and draw a little arrow. Now that is the vector of the velocity at that particular point. We can go to another time on the time axis and draw up and make an arrow as we reach the graph itself. And that is the velocity vector of the ball at that particular point. And we can go on and do this. Go from the timeline to the graph and make up an arrow. And these represent the actual velocity vectors of the graph. Do you see now what a velocity time graph really is? It's like a whole array, a whole line of the velocity vectors of the object, in this case the ball, at a given time. Now, at this point here as well, we can go down and meet the graph. Remember the rule? Down, meet the graph, make the arrow. And you can see that the velocity vector is now in the opposite direction. At that time, we could down, meet the graph, and the velocity vector is represented like that. That time here, could down, meet the graph, another velocity vector. That time here, could down, meet the graph, a smaller velocity time vector. So the velocity is actually getting smaller as it moves through time here. At point R, there is no velocity at all, so the object must be still, must be at rest. Use the same method to go from R to S. We start at the timeline, move up to the graph and draw a velocity vector. Timeline, move up, draw a velocity vector. Timeline, move up, draw a velocity vector. And timeline, move up, draw a velocity vector. And the same with this part here. Timeline, go down, velocity vector. Timeline, go down to the graph, make the arrow velocity vector. Timeline, go down to the graph, make the velocity vector. We could also do it here. At that point there is zero, no velocity. And this point here, timeline up to the graph, timeline up to the graph here like that. So really that's what we're looking at when we look at a velocity time graph. We're looking at the whole range of velocity vectors over a given time. But we know that the ball is falling down between O and P. So the convention here is this. If we have a vector like that, representing the velocity, by our convention of this graph, it must mean that the object is moving in a downward fashion. And likewise, if we flip that vector to make it go like that, it must mean that it's moving upward according to this convention. I'll say that again. Between O and P, we know the ball is falling, but we can see the velocity vectors are all pointing up the way. So the convention of this graph is that if the velocity vector is pointing up the way, the ball is actually moving downwards. And the opposite is the case. If the arrow or the velocity vector is moving down the way, the ball is moving upwards. Now we can see from the graph what is happening to the ball. We can see that between O and P, all the arrows are, move, are, are pointing up the way. So the ball is actually moving downwards at this point. So it's moving downwards, we'll call that D for downwards. Now at this point here, at point P, the velocity vector is still moving downwards, and then all of a sudden it's moving in this direction, which is upwards. So you're going from downwards to upwards in a matter of an instantaneous second, if that can happen. So at this point here, we must have a bounce. That's what we mean by a bounce. A bounce is when we have, in physics terms, the velocity vector changes direction very suddenly. That's what we mean by a bounce. So after the bounce, you can see the velocity vectors are pointing down the way, which means the ball is actually moving upwards. So we're moving upwards at this particular point here, between Q and R. At R, the ball has no velocity vector, which means the ball must be still, it must be at rest. And then after that, the velocity vectors are pointing upwards and they're increasing in size. So that must mean that the ball is falling back down again. So the first part of the journey, O to P, the ball is accelerating downwards, it's falling downwards with increasing velocity. Between P and Q, there's a bounce takes place because the velocity vector changes direction very quickly. Between Q and R, the velocity vectors are in the opposite direction, so it must mean it's doing exactly opposite from falling down. It's actually rising upwards, and the ball rises upwards until it gets to its maximum height at R. And then after R, 
the velocity vectors are all in the po all pointing upwards again, which means the ball is falling back down again. So, between O and P, the ball is falling downwards. Between P and Q, there's a bounce. Between Q and R, the ball is rising upwards. At R, the ball becomes stationary. And then after R to S, the ball is falling back down again. And that's all because we have lined up all the velocity vectors to match the graph. It's a simple little technique to do, but you can see what's happening. But by this convention, the very important part of this question is that if the velocity vector is pointing up the way, it means the ball is moving downwards. And if it's down this way, it means the velocity vector is pointing down the way, it means the ball is moving upwards. Now let's go to our statements. The ball hits the ground at P. Well, it must, because between P and Q, the bounce must take place. So that is correct. The ball is moving upwards between Q and R. Let's check. Between Q and R, the velocity vectors meet in the graph are all pointing down the way, but by our convention, that must mean that the ball is moving upwards. So the ball is moving upwards between Q and R. The ball is moving upwards between R and S. Well, between R and S, the velocity vectors are pointing in that direction, which must mean the ball is moving downwards. So that is false. So the answer to question number two is only statements one and two are correct, which means the answer is going to be D. So it's a very hard question, this one. And you have to remember the following key factors. Know how to draw the vectors into a velocity time graph. You start at the timeline and you go up to meet the graph and you draw a little arrow. Know that when there's a quick change of direction of velocity type of velocity uh, vector, that must mean a bounce. And get to know the convention. In this case, the ball is falling down when the vectors are pointing in that direction. So that must mean the downwards one. And when the vectors are in that direction, it's going to be upwards. It's just a convention chosen by this data measurement to get the velocity over a given time. A very difficult question, but I think you can study it and suss out how we get the velocity vectors in the graph.